Welcome again. My name is Mr. Cleophos and I want to talk to you again. Are you among those who did the April 2022 exam and failed the paper? I shall be discussing and uh, doing the advanced auditing and assurance questions uh, for those who want to know how the paper was set and what was expected by the paper or by the examiner. Follow me as I do question number one A this day or in this or today's lesson. And please ensure you join uh, the YouTube channel or you subscribe time to my YouTube channel so that you can get any time I just do part B of the question, you will be in a position to not be notified uh, by your maybe YouTube account. So let's proceed and read the question this is uh, the latest sitting april 2022 advanced auditing and assurance advanced auditing and assurance i am reading it from here my phone i have a soft copy of the first paper so this is uh, uh april 2022 question number one a which is 12 marks I want us to read because many students they do not feel advanced auditing and assurance because they have not been taught not really it is not because they have not been reading no it is not because they did not understand their notes for sure they have been for in section one up to now this advanced level so this must be very serious people but trust me this paper has been giving many students a hard time and here i am to sort the problem out, to bring a solution to this paper. I want to help you to interpret on how to interpret questions, on how to know what is required, and how to frame your answers. Let's read question number 1A of April 2022. This is Advanced Auditing and Assurance. Those who don't know it's a triple uh, A, Advanced Auditing and Assurance. This is there. Advanced level of CPA. The paper is S2, paper specialization number two for over specializing. It's for the new syllabus. So I read the regulatory body for professional accountants in your country has approached you to draft professional standards of practice in conduct and reporting on attestation engagement. These are engagements in which a professional accountant reports on the reliability of information, usually of a financial nature, presented by one party to another to assist the latter make inferences on the former. So it is to assist the latter make inferences in the, on the former required. With reference to International Standards on Auditing, ISS, and any other acceptable standards of global practice, prepare a proposal paper. Prepare a proposal paper on the required standards of professional practice. I repeat, prepare a proposal paper on the required standards of professional practice. So let's prepare the proposal paper. Uh, this proposal paper is on those required standards of professional practice. Standards of professional practice. Now, I want to help people because many people misinterpreted this question. So, let me help you to know what is required. So, it says, with reference to these ISS, the International Standards on Auditing, and any other acceptable standards of global practice. So, the key part is the last bit of it now, the one I'm reading. Prepare a proposal paper, that must be even a big deal, on the required standards of professional practice. So the key thing is standards of professional practice. So the proposal paper 
is on those general acceptable uh, standards of professional practice. So anyone practicing from the standards of professional practice, it is how the professional accountants, they should practice a proposal paper on their professional conduct. So this is touching on the legal framework, the ethical principles or the code of ethics for professional accountants. So that is what the question is asking for. So this code of ethics, number one, we have integrity. So the first thing it reads about integrity. So when you're explaining, you need to just say, this principle requires professional accountants it requires professional accountants to be honest comma straightforward straightforward and sincere So that is the first uh, professional uh, standard of pro professional practice. Number two, independence. So what does it mean? The principle or this principle requires Professional accountants who are now the auditors to have freedom from an undue influence of management, from undue influence of management and other parties. Or and others. We also have confidentiality. So the principle requires, it requires professional accountants or the auditors. to keep top secrets of the client's information, client's confidential information. I go ahead and wrap this. I go to the next one. Let me write the others here. I want to give at least five, but I'll mention the rest, which you can just, which you know. So, we also have. Number four, professional knowledge okay. competence, duke and skills, competence, due care, and the skills. So another one. So this one again requires professional accountant. requires professional accountants to only accept those appointments those appointments which they are capable to perform which they are capable 
to perform from start to finish without unnecessarily involving others. Without unnecessarily involving other people or others. It also requires them to maintain high levels of knowledge and skills. It also She also requires professional accountants. To maintain high level of professional knowledge and skills so as to give we can continue say so as to give quality services to the client So that is a professional knowledge, competence, duty, and skills is one of the ethics. Another one, uh, professional skepticism. Professional skepticism or skepticism. Again, this is a this principle requires the auditors to work with their attitude of doubt that something wrong might exist in the financial statements. So it is the doubting mind of the auditor when doing the audit that frauds and errors could be present in the financial statements. So we can say requires auditors to work with the doubting mind to work with the doubting mind that errors and frauds could be present then now we can we hope to have other not the last one those are five let me give the sixth one the question needed six principles each two marks And also change talk of the change in the professional appointment. Change in the professional appointment. So what does it really need? So whenever there is a change in the appointment of the auditor, the two auditors should communicate, or the incoming auditor should seek permission. I've said whenever there is change in the professional appointment of the auditor. The incoming auditor should seek permission from the client to communicate with the outgoing auditor so that he can again obtain things like working papers. He can also know the basis of charging fee used by the previous auditor. He can also uh, know the reason as to why the outgoing auditor is no longer the auditor, there is no longer the auditor of the client company to know whether there is any reason why he should not again accept the appointment, etc. etc. So you can just say, whenever there is change in the appointment or in the professional appointment of the editor, The incoming auditor should seek permission 
from the client. To communicate. With the outgoing auditor. To communicate with the outgoing auditor. So the following are the reasons. So the following are the reasons. Why the communication is important. Why this communication is important. One. Enables the incoming auditor to obtain working papers. To obtain audit working papers obtain audit working papers from the outgoing auditor or the previous auditor from the outgoing auditor again it is an act of courtesy for the communication to take place so it is a courtesy for this communication to take place it's an act of courtesy for the communication or for this communication to take place again enables the outgoing auditor to know the basis of charging audit fee enables our uh, incoming auditor or enables incoming auditor to know the basis of charging of the fee to know the basis of charging audit fee used by the previous auditor used by previous auditor So those are the reasons as to why the communication is important. Also, I have not, I've not written the others because of the space. It also enables the incoming auditor to know the reasons why the outgoing auditor is no longer the client auditor. So to know why he's no longer the auditor of the company. Another one, it also enables the incoming auditor to know whether there are any reasons why the appointment should not be accepted. So that is what the question needed. And this is last city. Last city, the latest question. Question number one A. I've said I shall be doing a question by question uh, before the end of this uh, period. I will have covered all the questions which uh, were examined. So please follow my channel. I'm telling you, I'm ready to help the CPA students. God bless you. God be with you. Let's meet next class in my next course effect as I also continue doing more past paper questions.